guys thanks so much for tuning in today we are working on another DIY cleaning project so keep watching if you want to learn with me how to make your own toilet fizzing cleaning tablets we're, <laughs> we're gonna come up with a better name than that by the end so I'm really excited to make these not to replace my weekly cleaning but for in between just to keep um, everything fresh and clean and smelling wonderful in my bathroom. So um, let's start with the ingredients. Baking soda, citric acid. So this you can maybe find with canning supplies. I had to order it from Amazon, but that's fine. A little spray bottle with just plain water in it. Three essential oils, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. And the great things about these, first of all, I mean, the smell is gonna be Incredible. Love all those smells on their own and together. I'm sure it's just gonna be like an amazing essential oil cocktail So lavender in terms of the cleaning properties. I did some research to see like, okay, what's so great about these three? Why are they great at cleaning and not just great at smelling good? So what I found out is lavender is an antiseptic antiviral bactericidal fungicidal agent um, and then similarly lemon is antiseptic anti microbial and bactericidal. Bacteri I want to say bactericidal, but there's no A in it. Um, and then peppermint from my reading is a natural antiseptic as well. Other things you're gonna need, measuring cups, a spoon, a mixing bowl, and I'm really excited about this because I've never used it before. I just got it last night in a package from Amazon. It's the it's a sil it's essentially just a silicone baking mold. You can use an ice cube tray, ice cube molds, but this is like made for tiny little brownies. But who wants a brownie that small? Nobody. But um, this is what we're going to use to actually shape our little tablets. Um, and then you're gonna need some time because in the recipes I read, you have to let this sit for four or five hours or up to overnight. Let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing and let's get excited. The first thing we're gonna add is one and a third cups of baking soda. So I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm like digging out the cup and then I'm using my hand on the outside of the packaging to kind of level it off and pack it in there. And if you've watched me do other recipes, um, you'll know that I have a penchant for being inexact, but that is a cup. Now we've just got a third of a cup. Third cup measure. If I say a third cup measure, it sounds like I have three of them and this is the final one, but it's a third of a cup measure. So there's that. Now, in the recipes that I've read, some people add the essential oils now, and some people add the citric acid first and then the essential oils, and that's what I'm gonna do just because I feel like I can get an even mix on the powders um, if I mix them by themselves first. So a half a cup of citric acid, which is about half of this container. This is only 7.5 ounces. Mm, I can actually taste citrus in the air from the citric acid, like flying, flying around a little bit. Um, now, a lot of times, even just to mix powders, I would go ahead and get a whisk so that I could mix powders together really well, but I am not doing that because I have a spoon with me and so that's what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see, there's like a fine dust, you know, coming out of this as I stir it. So just be careful. Um, don't stir it directly below your mouth and nose because I don't think these are like particularly beneficial when inhaled, if you know what I mean. There's some chunks in here I'm trying to crush so that we don't have like a situation. Now, in terms of adding essential oils, which is gonna be our next step, how much do you add? Well, recipes that I saw really varied quite a bit. Um, they varied from like 20 to 30 total drops, all the way up to 30 per type. So I tend to like things pretty heavily fragranced, so I'm gonna to aim towards the upper limit. So I'm just gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna try 
this is my first time making this, so I don't know if it's gonna start fizzing or what it's gonna do, but I'm gonna try to distribute evenly and um, keep the whole process as minimally eruptive as possible. Okay, so I have my peppermint. I don't have, there's no reason for the order I'm adding these. Um, this already smells amazing, just opening the bottle, and here we go. Come on. Okay, that was about 30 drops. Lavender, and this is the 365 brand, which you can get at Whole Foods. Now for lemon oil. This I ordered on Amazon, because I actually couldn't find lemon oil at Whole Foods, believe it or not. Love when they come with a dropper. So frankly, I can see these little clumps where the essential oils have uh, dampened the dry mixture, but like overall, this is still super dry and I am having a hard time conceptualizing how this is gonna be able to actually come together to form little tabs. Okay, now I just have, I got this little bottle at Target, it's the Up and Up brand, it's just water. I'm gonna start spraying a little bit. So when you spray the water, it definitely starts fizzing a little bit. And from what I read, you wanna to try to keep the fizzing to a minimum because you want the fizzing to happen inside your toilet. Okay, I'm gonna test it to see like how clumpy it's feeling. I mean, I guess it is kind of clumping a little bit. See, it's like kind of holding its shape. Whoops. Kind of. Okay, let's add a little more water. It's so funny, even though, you know, we've used three different essential oils, it actually, to me, it smells like a toilet bowl cleaner. So maybe these are really commonly used ingredients. Okay, I don't particularly want to do this, but let's try this. I mean... Okay, so actually that seems to be... Oh. <laughs> well, it's starting to hold its shape, so I'm gonna maybe do just one more round of spritzes. Okay, party people. So this is starting to clump when I grab a handful. So I'm gonna go ahead and start transferring it to the brownie mold and hoping for the best. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is actually spray a little water first, like inside each, oh, and here's a close up, by the way, if you couldn't see it before from far away of the brownie tray. And this is the packaging that I, this is what I got on Amazon. So what I'm gonna do gonna try this. I'm gonna spray a little water inside each thing, mash the product down, and then spray a little water on top as well and mash it down some more. And my thought process is um, because when you sprayed the mixture, that's what caused the like clumping action. I'm thinking that um, that putting like a little extra water on the top and bottom will sort of help solidify the edges so that they'll stay whole tablets when I go to store them in a jar or something. So let's get started. Okay, so let's just start with one. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Oh, this is gonna be a mess here. Let me do this. Gonna use the back of the spoon to flatten this down. And because our aim is for these to become and stay solid until um, they get put in water, I'm gonna pack it down as much as I can. And then add some more on top. Oh yeah, this is a hands, this is a clean fingers and hands job. 
also. Okay, look how cute. One is done. Just gonna, and I'm gonna hold this kind of further away. Just try to get it, this, you know. If you have a finer mist spray bottle, I would recommend that. This one kind of spits at you a little bit. All right, onward we go. Gonna go ahead and spray the whole tray so that I don't, you know, interrupt the process by, okay, there we go. If I were guessing, I'd say there's about two tablespoons of product um, in each of these. So keep your eye on the ones that are already done, because I can, like I just saw this one was sort of was getting loose and fizzing over here. So be careful also when you direct your spray that you're not disrupting um, any of the ones you've worked so carefully to pat down. Okay, here's one thing I'm gonna do. I've been trying to spray each of these um, like on the top with a little bit of water as I go. And it's causing like little water droplets or getting into the other guys and then I have to repat them. So I've just decided I'm gonna wait till this is all full and then I'm just gonna spritz over all of them and then pack them down again. And what I'll say so far as I've done seven of them is this is fun y'all and it smells great but it is real time consuming. So make sure you have yourself a good afternoon if you wanna do this project, just saying. So the one thing I want to emphasize is um, this is just real tedious. It smells good, um, spoiler alert, but I ended up happy with the finished product. It's just that this took a lot of time and energy to carefully, you know, make sure that everything was mashed down in the mold um, so that everything was densely packed. And you can see what I'm doing here is just going back over every single square. Um, when everything is, you know, as densely packed as I feel like I can get it, I spray it with water. Then I go back over it because as you can see, it starts fizzing a little bit on the top when you spray it down with water. So I'm just going back over it with my fingertips. You can see a couple of them got too wet and, and so I end up pulling up some of the product on my finger. Um, like that for example so I scrape the edge of the bowl to try to get some dry product back down on it and you can see even the ones I've gone over and haven't sprayed again but you see they're fizzing again so I go back and I flatten them out again smooth them out again so it's just a lot of doing that kind of hurt my fingers honestly by the end of it all um, but uh, if you're up for it then totally do it. And if you have tips on how to make it easier, then totally tell me because I'd love to do it again. But I would also love for it to be a little quicker process than how long it took me. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> let me just say, I'm gonna speak the truth. This is not for the faint of heart, just my opinion. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna clean up this mess, clearly. This guy just has to sit for four or five hours or overnight, which I'm so anxious now that I've put in all this work to see how it goes, but um, I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to practice patience, people. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna work on. And um, I will see you guys in four or five hours or possibly tomorrow, but thanks if you've stuck with me so far. Hi guys, welcome back to my bathroom. We are on day two. I went ahead and let our DIY toilet fizzies sit overnight. 
Um, I did leave them on a cutting board because obviously this silicone mold is floppy and malleable and I didn't want um, them to like be interrupted in their in the phase where they hopefully become hardened tablets. One thing I want to mention about yesterday is after I was done making them, my throat hurt all the rest of the day. Um, so I think the citric acid got in there and aggravated it. Um, so one tip that I will say is get yourself one of these guys and wear it if you're making them or bring, like if I had it to do over again, I would definitely have brought out my air purifier from my bedroom into where I was making them, worn a mask or something. So just really be careful because the particles are really small, they fly up in the air, and if they irritated my throat, you know, I don't think of myself as particularly sensitive, so um, be careful. This is, this stuff is no joke. And hopefully it'll be no joke cleaning. So I haven't used it yet. I did, by the way, just clean my toilet really well because there's no way I would not have an immaculate toilet for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can see with me and um, we'll hope for the best and see how it goes. Okay guys, we're ready to go. Gonna pop one of these out. They smell good. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm impressed. Check that out. It popped out super easy and it's much harder than I would have expected. I was concerned that these would just crumble into a mess as soon as I took them out, but they didn't. All right, here it goes. <laughs> it's not super fun. Well, kind of anticlimactic. Took about two minutes, I would say, for it to is all the way out and I can sort of see some powder that has gathered at the bottom of the toilet. Um, I can't vouch for its cleaning power obviously since this is the first time I'm using it but I'm definitely going to be using them. I'm thinking, so one of the blogs that I read, which by the way the two blogs, I might have read a third one but I read uh, One Good Thing by Jilly and Bits and Giggles blogs, so thank you guys. One of them said not to flush it until it was completely done fizzing or you could cause, if it's like fizzing in the pipes, you could cause some horrendous, you know, end of the world type scenario in your pipes. So my plan is every night before I go to bed, I'll just drop one in there and it'll fizz and it'll have those essential oils and baking soda and citric acid to get to work overnight so that like every day I wake up to a perfectly clean toilet. Is that awesome? I don't know, it seems awesome to me. So the last step is we're just gonna find some storage. So, um, hang on, I'll be right back. Is that? Okay, so I brought two storage jars and I'm not sure, the tablets are pretty small and I would love for them to fit in this because it has this like um, pretty airtight gasket seal. I want to store these in my bathroom and I don't want, my bathroom gets really humid when um, we take showers in here so I don't want the humidity to start, you know, degrading the tablets while they're just sitting in, a, in an open jar. So the idea is if I can keep them in here, just set them on the back of my toilet then they're right there for me. So let's see how this goes. Cool! How much fun is this? I also saw recipes for tabs, for dishwasher tabs, that you can make yourself. I didn't bother reading the recipe because I don't have a dishwasher. My dishwasher? The old joke, it's my two hands. Um, but I'm sure it's something similar. So if you get really into this, 
You can have tabs for everything. Okay, so I've got 15 of them in here. Oops. Ah, this is so awesome. So when I pulled them out, you can see they do crumble a little bit. Just the edges. So next time I do this, I will make sure to really mash down the edges so they're not quite as jagged. If you have some kind of a stamping thing, um, you know, what I'm trying to say is all of the edges that were right up against the silicone mold are really nice and smooth and then the top is just a little bit jagged so that's where it's crumbling from. So I would say make the tops as smooth as you can and around the edges as well. Um, and I am gonna keep this up. So let me know if you have questions at all. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you've ever done anything like this or if you have tips on how to tweak it, make it even better, I always love your tips. So thank you guys so much for watching and happy cleaning. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.